set the fame on what Rakti Ragans are. I think we are all in general agreement that Rakti Ragans are Ragans that have risen out of melody, which are defined by phrases, not scales. The phrases have passed on from generation to generation along with bhava, nuances. They are not just a cluster of swarms. They have been passed on with nuances and bhava. And whatever is left today, it's all by oral testimony. Most of it is by oral testimony that we have the ravans today. But all these varnams, they give us a glimpse of what these ragams might have been in those days, yesteryears. So it is very important that we preserve these varnams. Uh, so, and I, uh, the varnam that I just sang is uh, the Ananda Bhairavi varnam by Sri Ponaya Pillai. We all know who Ponaya Pillai is. He belongs to the Tanju Quartet. Um, Chinaya Ponaya, Shivananda, and Vadivedu. Uh, to talk about the origin of Varnams. Uh, Varnams are relatively modern compositions. The first known Varnams was, uh, were uh, known to be composed by Sri Pachyamriya Adi Pai, Adi Appaliya, Adi Appaliya, Pachyamriya Adi Appaliya and his uh, contemporary um, Pallavi Gopalaya. They, are, they both belong to the Tanjur um, Samasthana and uh, you know this, there is a claim that uh, Sri Shama Sastri learned from Pachi Mariam and uh, you know this, the drastic change in structure of Kritis, the augmentation of the rhythmic structure of the Murti Kari leads me to believe and especially this piece of information that Shyama Sastri learned from Pachyamriya Mahi Pehya, it makes me believe that the Mumurti's compositions and the compositions after that, they have been inspired by these varnams. We have two compositions of Sri Shyama Sastri's, we have two varnams of Sri Shyama Sastri, one is Devana and one is Saurashram which I have been presenting today. But look at the rhythmic augmentation. Right after the varnams, the structure came into being. Look at Tyagaraja Swami's varnams, and look at the look at Tyagaraja Swami's kritis, and look at the kritis before the era of the Mumurti. There is such an augmentation, there is such a, an improvement slash augmentation in the rhythmic structure. Even Shama Sastri, it's mainly rhythm oriented Shama Sastri's kritis. So definitely, they have been inspired by these varnams. Is what I think. It's my personal belief. And um, so many disciples of uh, Sri Tyagaraja Swami and Shyama Sastri and Nitya Swami Dikshita, they have composed many varnams. In fact, Anju Quartet, they are the disciples of Nitya Swami Dikshita. And uh, something interesting that I found um, is that the Tanju Quartet are very, they lean a lot towards patterns. For example, Mm-hmm. 
there was so much vishanti that they used to they could afford to give one more hour to you know stand vishrantiya paranin then take the next time that space that is the beauty of these compositions you know what is rakti literally rakti means something that is desirable we are clear that we know what is going to be Virakti means the opposite of virakti is rakti. Something that is so catchy and instantly desirable, that instant gratification when you hear that, those are rakti rags. Also like that. 
So she was telling that it's better to teach the Sahityam with the tune first. And then correlate the Swaram accordingly. Such a, such a wise way, like, such a smart thing to do. Anyway, the completion is, you know the pattern one more in the Swaram.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and it's incorporated and see how it happens. Of course, again, I'm saying copy paste from the other, I'm not for that. But this specific muscle memory, you can be more creative based upon this. You need a foundation, right? That's how you approach these numbers. Okay, if I can ask you some last time, I'm
You don't have to worry about spilling over at all. If we have internalized the ragams, we don't have to. We never worry about uh, singing Kalyani and Shankar Bhagavan side by side, right? It's only one song difference, but you know, because we have internalized, internalized the ragams so much. So, mm -hmm.
Thank you so much.